Hello there. We're in early autumn and I'm in a nice tea garden in Jingmai Mountain, one of the ancient tea gardens. Uh, this one is not ours, but it belongs to one of our family members and sometimes we source tea from here. Um, in the background I can hear the roaring of streamers. So streamers is a, a handheld machine that allows you to cut weed. And that's the topic I want to talk about today. I want to talk about mid management as we approach the, um, uh, the early autumn, as we end the summer. During the rainy season, we have to manage the weeds. So as soon as the, the rain starts to fall on the Yunnan tea mountains, uh, usually in May or June, the, the, all the plants that are on the ground will start to grow and uh, at some point we need to cut them. We need to cut them because they will suck up a lot of nutrients that would be um, uh, used by the tea trees instead. So they, they kind of act as a reserve of nutrients. So let's talk about nitrogen. Nitrogen is the most important nutrient in the tr in tropical environments usually because that's the one that in most of the cases that's the one you're lacking so the more nitrogen you add the the better the soil fertility will be the the higher the yield you'll get so we always want to add uh, some nitrogen or find ways to, to capture it why is nitrogen the main deficient nutrient well, it's because uh, it's very easy, unlike the other, unlike most of the other nutrients like uh, magnesium or phosphate or potassium, things like that. Uh, nitrogen is in a very free um, chemical form. Well, it, it binds easily to other stuff than the soil and the plants, and so it's easily washed away. That that makes nitrogen the the most uh, leachable. I could say leachable nutrient. It means that it can es escape your environment easily. So I'm walking around the tea gardens just to show you a little bit the, um, the architecture. Here we have kind of small trees. Uh, but le let's have a look at the soil, okay? So on this soil you can see that this soil has been cleaned. Well, there's not much grass growing here. And, um, well, it's probably because the the weeds were cut maybe maybe a few weeks ago and uh, we cannot see actually a lot of weed growing so it th there are areas where where weed doesn't grow easily it can be due to a heavy shading uh, in some areas it can be due to um, a more a heavy mulch a heavy cover on the ground for example a cover of dead leaves that fall from big trees and that prevent the weeds from growing you can see fruits on the ground and so of course it's because there's a fruit tree just above so on this soil we don't have many many wheat growing but you can see that the soil is quite dark so that's always uh, it means there's a lot of organic matter in it but I would say most soils around here are, are dark I mean on the um, when you're in a forested area and in Tapingzhang on the plateau where we are now um, there's a high amount of organic matter but of course the the amount of organic matter it, it really it's very local you know it depends uh, you can move 10 20 meters away and you'll find no organic matter because maybe you're on a heavy slope and there's no trees or because of some uh, soil properties that make it hard for it to to hold the organic matter so um, it's not like that the soil texture which tends to be more consistent across a, a wider uh, field so you can see here this is the kind of weed that that we have growing I don't really know what it is but uh, you can see all those uh, little stuff growing and you can see that here they have been cut so you can see that this is they went with the streamer here okay but in this garden it seems we don't find a lot of a lot of weeds uh, I don't know what they did it's it 
it looks like almost as if they they took away the almost as if they took away the the weeds after cutting which is an unusual practice but i'd like to cross the cross the path here and show you another field this is the field that uh, wanted me to to make this video actually because uh, you can find well well it seems the weeds were quite tall here when they cut them and this is why they left them on the ground and it means you have quite a heavy uh, a heavy mulch on the ground a heavy cover okay so uh, this cover is very important because this cover will become the the organic matter uh, that's in the soil well it will become organic matter and will enrich the soil over the months and as i said many times before organic matter is good for the soil fertility because it improves the nutrient and water retention capability of the soil so um well uh, this is basically the the main thing you can you can modify in the soil when you have a given soil you know you can't really uh, modify the the texture of the soil if you have a sandy soil uh, then you know uh, you can't really add much clay in it you know but you can nurture uh, organic matter and of course this organic matter uh, is in equilibrium in uh, well how to say that there's like an equilibrium don't think that when you get organic matter now if you if you do nothing and wait for some years you'll still get the same amount of organic matter um, every year you lose some of that organic matter it is consumed by the by the microfauna because this organic matter is actually uh, all broken plants like the, this stuff what's going to happen with with this green green mulch well, uh, first it's going to change color. So, as a rule of thumb, when you when you see it's green, it means the the nitrogen is still in the plant, and when it turns brown, it means that the nitrogen has gone into the soil. So, um, I guess this means that uh, you get that nitrogen boost as soon as the as the leaves change colors. Although I'm not a hundred percent sure about this and um, so this organic matter is, is actually if you took a, uh, if you took a, a microscope or a, a big binocular or something you would see that these are tiny fragments of plants so th this is just this plant that's been eaten by microorganism um, by the microfauna in the soil and that's been degraded okay but this is still some good food for some uh, some bacteria and fungi so this is why you have a lot of bacteria and fungi growing in this soil that will um, well that will keep degrading it and actually extract the nutrients if you don't have that microbial activity the plants won't, bo won't be able to to capture those nutrients so um, you, you kind of feed like you you need to add it's always good to to add um, to add new green matter quite often in your soil because that will ensure that you have a good soil ecosystem uh, let's imagine that uh, well, well you basically you're you're just uh, you're just feeding all those microorganisms and making sure that uh, they get a, a fairly consistent supply of food that will enable them to thrive I'm talking about microorganisms, but it's not only microorganisms. It can on only also be worms and all the the tiny insects that you can see in the uh, well. If if you take a close look at the soil, uh, I recommend you you go to a nearby park and just take a look at a piece of soil, and you'll really be amazed actually by uh, by how rich it is. These are things we don't often pay attention to, but uh, I can tell you that it can be very interesting to watch a piece of soil. So you can see that here, well, these leaves, 
probably fell from the trees, probably fell from the tree that are just above and they also complete the smells. Ah, we're having great weather today. It's a great time to walk around in the tea gardens and have a look at that nature. Um, so yeah, basically you could say in Jing Mai we get our we get our organic matter from two sources: the big trees that have uh, leaves falling on the ground and the weeds that we cut. So there's a good. Uh, there should be a, a good time for when to cut the, the weeds actually. If you cut them too early, you won't get that much organic matter because they won't have they they will be too small. And the uh, the other drawback is that uh, well you will ha have to cut them again maybe two weeks later because uh, you cut you cut them small so uh, that's a lot of work and you don't really want that. But you cannot really cut them too old. You, you don't want to cut them when they are too old because, uh, well, otherwise they, they will suck up too, too much nutrients and it will, uh, well, it will kind of starve your tea trees and you don't really want that either uh, most of the time. So I'd say when they are knee high, well, when they reach your knee, that, that's about the good time to cut them. That's a good balance. Um, when I was in Taiwan, I, I discussed this this topic with uh, researchers from the, you know, the TRESS, like the Tea Research Extension Station in Taiwan, and they did some research about this, and they told me that, well, the best way, the most efficient way to to cut weed for um, for a good biodiversity is to um, uh, not dig them out actually, to keep the roots inside, and just basically give them a haircut. It means that you just cut the weeds but you don't kill them and that allows you to both collect that green matter but also allow them to keep growing. It doesn't disturb the, the root system of those weeds which means that you have the, the stabilizing effect in the soil that, that's uh, given by those weeds and also um, you get a better uh, soil, soil biodiversity like you'll get more, you, you'll get more microorganisms, more mesofauna like, like worms. Uh, what, what's the name of that that little stuff? The um, the nematodes. It's like very tiny worms. Uh, these are also very useful in the soil. Oh yeah, and maybe you, you're thinking like, what's the point of having biodiversity in the soil? Well, they bring a lot of uh, ecosystem services. For example, some bacteria can get nitrogen directly from the atmosphere. So you get a free fertilization with that. Now, of course, don't expect miracles. It's not a huge amount, but it's still a good bonus. Then, um, well, again, if you, if you have that organic matter, you get better soil fertility because uh, of better water and nutrient retention capabilities. I said that already then you get um, you get a better structure in your soil if you have mesofauna if you have uh, well if you have nematodes and worms all those animals that uh, um, that like to crawl through your soil they actually dig galleries there and uh, it helps aerate the soil uh, they do a work that that you'd need a, a big machine for if you if you were to do it yourself so it can be a, a good option actually not to touch the soil too much. Uh, it doesn't mean it's the best choice, it, it, it really depends on where you are. But uh, in some cases this is called uh, conservation agriculture. So yeah, if you, if you have plenty of time and you want to take, take good care of your garden, I would recommend that you, you cut the weed uh, just in this manner. You see, just cutting the weed at the top, not not digging them out. Here, uh, it depends on the farmers. Most people like to dig them out by uh, digging the this by sticking this the streamer blade into the ground so that you have a kind of uh, a light tilling. But um, well, according to those researchers in Taiwan, you get a better long-term result 
by cutting them in that way with the um, by, by cutting them short okay so um, that's about it for today that's all what I wanted to say uh, I don't know I didn't have a very uh, precise subject but um, I just chose to take this video on the spot and I hope you enjoy it see you later